Nej. Uh, I don't even know what to say. It, it's that good. It is, that's so good. Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather. Today I am going to try to make my very own bacon. Now, there's a couple of things that I need to point out before we start. There are several methods of making bacon out there. There's the wet curing method and there's the dry curing method. I have researched both and I think that I'm gonna go with Alton Brown's recipe-esque. And I say recipe-esque because I'm not quite using the same seasonings he is, but I'm using the same idea that he has done. Basically, we're gonna put everything into a food saver bag that's where this comes in, and we are going to dry cure it in the refrigerator for seven to 10 days. So without further ado, let's start on this adventure. Are you ready? I'm ready, I'm so excited because you know I love bacon. If you follow this channel, you know, you know, you know I love bacon. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna talk about salt. Now, curing your own bacon is actually pretty easy, but it requires something besides the common salt that you have in your cupboard. This is not the salt you're looking for. This is not the salt you're looking for. This is kosher salt. Very good salt. We're still gonna need kosher salt, but this is not only the salt we're looking for. We are also going to use something called pink curing salt. Pink curing salt is available in most restaurant stores or you can buy it on Amazon for just a couple dollars. Um, I will leave a link to it in the comments below. This is also called preg powder. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it's called preg powder, number one, but this salt and this salt are very different. You would never, ever, ever want to use this on your food besides if you are curing. This has sodium nitrate in it and it's actually kind of caustic. So do not use this on your food, use this on your food. <laughs> all right, so to start off, we are going to get our pork belly all ready. Um, this came from a local purchase. Um, I, we buy a pig a couple times a year. And uh, this is, usually I get the bacon already cut. And then I thought to myself this last time, why? I can totally try this as an adventure because I love bacon and if I can make my own bacon and can control what kind of nitrates are inside of it, why wouldn't I do that, right? So. That's why I decided to do this adventure. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to wash this bad boy very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a wash and then we're gonna dry it off. So I'll be right back. Okay, so Alton Brown says to dry off your pork really well. So dry, dry, dry. He also said to leave your pork skin on. So if your pork belly came with skin on it, which this is the skin, there's even still hairs on it. It's fine. I love bacon too much to care. Okay, so now that it's dry, we're gonna just set it right there. I'm not gonna lie. I love bacon, but I'm a tad bit grossed out by just this. And you do need a cup of coffee to deal with this. Next step, I honestly didn't think it was gonna be this hard to uh, do a pork belly, but I'm a little queasy right now. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this may ruin bacon for me forever or it may be the best thing ever. I don't know, I'm more coffee, hold on. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our dry curing ready. So I have one fourth of a cup of brown sugar, one fourth of a cup of kosher salt, four tablespoons plus one teaspoon of spices. Now Alton Brown wanted you to use red pepper flakes, sweet paprika, and some dried coriander. Um, however, I've decided that I'm gonna use my South Platte Six Pepper Blend that I got from the High Plains Spice Company back last year. 
um, because it has almost all of those spices in it plus others. And I thought, ooh, that would be a fun way to try out this spice. And then we're gonna mix that together and that's why I gloved up my hands. Oh, I forgot the curing salt. That would have been bad. All right, I'm gonna need two teaspoons of curing salt. All right, and now I will mix all of the dry things all together. All right, so let's go ahead and put in our honey. One fourth of a cup of honey. Let's just mix all that together. Ooh, sticking to my whole glove, which is why I'm using a glove. Here we go. We are going to rub this in all over the place. All right, I feel much more confident now because it is getting everywhere. Just took, it just takes a second. So don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. I feel like now that I'm rubbing this on, I do want to take that top layer of skin off. Luckily, I have my sharp knife nearby. So we're just going to take the skin layer off. <laughs> okay well uh, I'm sure that that was a hack job I apologize to any butchers that may have had to shield their eyes from this situation but I feel better about that and and when I slice it later I'll just put that part towards the bottom that'll be good but I do feel better about getting the cure on the meat instead of the skin, because I'm not keeping the skin anyway. <sighs> I don't know. Decisions on the fly are, are, aren't always the best decisions. And I'm sure if you've made your own bacon and I just created some kind of real big faux pas, please let me know in the comments below. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know it says massage your meat. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna massage all of my beautiful curing into this meat and it's gonna be amazing because Alton Brown says so. All right, once we have ensured that our meat is covered with our cure, it's time to get it into a vacuum seal bag. Ooh. Look at that. How we're gonna seal for this is we are going to make sure our flaps are pretty straight. We're gonna lift up our channel here, stick our bag in there, make sure both sides of the bag are in the channel. And then I'm going to push down and then push once, if it was on. <laughs> push down, push once. Look at that. Sealed, beautiful, ready to go. And it's sealing itself. And when it's done, it will let go. Look at that, sealed. He's gonna go into the refrigerator for seven to 10 days. All right, see you in about a week. All right, welcome back everybody. It has been seven days and our pork belly looks the same as when it went into the refrigerator. So um, today we are gonna need two things. We are gonna need a fan. Yes, a fan. So the recipe I'm following says use a fan. So we're gonna use a fan. I'm just gonna go with it. I've never done this before. And a rack on a sheet so it can drain or our air can go through. I'm not actually sure. Whoa. Hey there, looks pretty good in there. I mean, I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but right now I need to give this thing a really good wash. All right, it has been fully rinsed. But what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna dry this really well. And then for the next hour, we are going to blow this fan on this meat, turning it every 15 minutes so that it can thoroughly dry 
in all the directions. So I don't, there were, there were a lot of other methods. Some were dry for two days in the fridge. Some were dry for 24 hours. Some were blow a fan. This one takes one to two hours because you have to check it after the one hour. And it seems the least fiddly. And you know, I'm not into fiddly things. So we're gonna go with this method. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna set a timer for an hour and I will be back when this is done after I've flipped it a couple times. See you back here in a few. All right, the time is up and the way that our bacon looks is phenomenally different than when we started. So it looks, it looks like it has a crust on it, which they said that's what we're looking for. So I'm pretty impressed with this method so far, so far. Now, I read a couple of websites that I, smoking your bacon at home is easy, they say. However, one of the methods that they want you to use kind of concerns me a little. So I thought I would share the method with you, but I don't think I'm gonna do it because it, I don't wanna burn down the house. So we're gonna take a roasting pan. Maybe I, see, I'm so torn. Like some of me wants to try it because I'm like, well, someone posted about it. Someone thought it worked. And then the other half of me is like, panic, panic. So here's what we have to do. We are going to put foil in the bottom of our roasting pan. I'm seriously still debating on if I'm gonna do it this way or not. If I'm going through with it, maybe I won't burn down the house, maybe. Okay, so here I have mesquite smoking chips. We are going to pour them in the bottom of this tray. It's like I'm making a campfire in my oven. It makes me a little nervous. Okay, now we need to have something to raise the pork belly up above the chips. I took a little time to finagle some things. So this is a wire rack um, that I use for my quick cooker and I can nestle that easily down inside the chips. And then I'm going to put a roasting rack right on top so that my pork belly fits right there on top. And then we put the pork belly on like that. Maybe I'll do it like this. I am so worried though. I am so worried. But first, I am going to insert a thermometer at the widest part of the meat right here. That way I always know the temperature of my meat. And then we are going to seal it like a little package. Make sure it's not touching the meat. Now we are going to seal the rest of this up. And make sure you seal up your sides because you want to seal in all the smoke that it makes. I'm nervous. It'll be fine. The internet says it'll be fine. Now we go over to the oven. All right, now we're gonna turn it on to medium high heat for about five minutes or until we see this start to smoke. We're also gonna go ahead and turn on our oven at 200 degrees. We'll be back when that starts to smoke. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that into the oven right away. Okay, I did it. I put it in, it was smoking. I'm opening up the windows and we'll be back here once the pork belly reaches 150, which could take anywhere from two to four hours, depending on how thick the pork belly is. So I hope I don't burn down my house. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. I'm happy to report the house did not burn down. All right. Look at there. 150. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to carefully open and reveal dum, 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 our beautiful pork belly bacon. Um, okay, so I'm gonna let this cool completely and then I'm going to wrap it tightly in saran wrap and then we are gonna get it into the refrigerator for 24 hours. However, it's gonna be more like 36 because it's evening and I'm thinking I want to do a breakfast recipe. I'll be back in 36 hours and we'll slice it up and we'll find out how it worked out. I'm kind of excited. I'm super excited actually. All right, now after all of that waiting, we are now ready to see the results of our labor. Take out our beautiful smoked pork belly. All right, let's go. Oh, look at that. Looks like bacon to me. Wow. Huh, that's uh, pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, if that bacon tastes good, other than the fact that we had to wait, you know, several days while it cured and then smoked and then cooled, um, I, that looks like bacon to me. I'm, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. That doesn't happen very much. Um, yeah, wow. But that looks great, you guys. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. I can't believe that this actually worked. I mean, I really can't believe this actually worked. I actually was procrastinating doing this last bit because I'm like, oh, if this doesn't work. I'm gonna be so sad. But I'm pretty sure that this is a home run. Check it out. Look at this beautiful bacon that I made. And I am like, wow, this is just, this is pretty cool. Like, I'm not gonna lie, this is cool. I didn't think I could do it. I, I thought that something would go wrong. I really did not think that this adventure was gonna turn into a video. So I am pleasantly surprised. Okay, so the real test, we all know, how does it should taste? So what we are going to do is we are gonna use the Pampered Chef Deluxe Electric Grill and Griddle to make some breakfast. You ready? Let's do this thing. So first of all, what I love about the this design is it opens all the way. This is fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and turn it on and we are gonna go ahead and set it to griddle and go. So we're gonna get both sides going at the same exact temperature. What's really nice about this grill is that if you are to cooking two separate kinds of dishes, like some meat that needs to be at 400 and some meat that needs to be at 350, you could definitely do them side by side here each griddle has its own temperature control, but we're gonna do both of them at 350 because that's what the directions say. And we're actually going to do some gluten-free pancakes, some eggs, and our bacon. So let's let that heat up, and as soon as it's done heating up, we will begin. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and push start so that it counts down from 60 minutes. That's the default setting and we're just gonna get started. So I'm gonna take some of our beautiful pieces of bacon. Oh man, are they beautiful. And we're gonna stick them right on the grill side. Beautiful. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and get my griddle ready on this side. I'm gonna just use a little cooking oil and I'm gonna go ahead and get my pancakes going. All right, and then we're gonna crack some eggs. 
Don't touch the pancake. Oh, party foul. Gonna hit it with some salt and some pepper. This is my lunch today. I've been waiting, super excited to eat this. I'm not gonna eat all those pieces of bacon, but I don't know, maybe I will. We'll see. But they're cooking up really well. I'm pretty impressed right now. Oh my goodness. Breakfast, so easy with the Deluxe Cooking Grill and Griddle. No, the Deluxe Electric Grill and Griddle. All right, let's flip over our bacon. Look at those beautiful grill marks. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the eggs off because we definitely don't want to overcook those. Beautiful. And our, our pancakes are done. Grab myself a paper lined plate and let's go ahead and get these off of there. Okay, I'm gonna taste the bacon all by itself. Woo, it's a little hot. Wow. Mm. Oh. Oh man. Wow. That's really good bacon. Oh my goodness. Um. Wow. That is phenomenal. I. I. I don't have words for how good that is. That is unlike any bacon I've ever tasted in my life. Let's find out how everything tastes. So here we have my beautiful over easy egg and my fluffy gluten-free pancake. Look at that. And we're gonna eat those two together. Hmm, perfect. Now our beautiful bacon, mm -hmm. nom nom, with our egg. Mm. Here's the thing. If I can make my own bacon at home with no smoker and not burn down my house, you can too. Be and you should, because this is so good. One thing I will mention is the bacon looks burnt on the thing and I was actually kind of worried that it is, but I think it's all the caramelization bits because there is no burnt flavor on this bacon whatsoever. It is just, oh, it is so good. Mm. I think I'm ruined for store-bought bacon for the rest of my life. I don't even know how to describe it. It's so good. There's, you can taste the saltiness. You can taste that hickory flavor from the wood chips. You can taste the seasonings. Oh man, you guys, this is a win. This, this, and this, and all of this. This whole video is a home run. It went right into center field, right over the the wall, no one even jumped for it. It was that high. And one pork belly made a ridiculous amount of bacon. So I'm gonna use my vacuum sealer. I'm gonna seal it up, get it into my freezer. And next time I need bacon, it's gonna be right there and it's gonna be delicious. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm. Oh, I need to get that pancake off. Look, it didn't burn. All right, you guys, if you enjoyed that video, give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week, and I'm always up for the adventure. Pork belly, breakfast on the deluxe electric grill and griddle. If you have an idea for me, leave it in the comments below, and I'll see what I can do. Mm. Otherwise, I'm going to leave you so that I can eat my lunch and maybe some more bacon. All right, you guys, until next time. Bye.